between May and June of this year, a group of orcas began attacking multiple sailboats off the Iberian coast and even sank three of them. The yell of killer whales seen attacking small and large boats off the coast of Spain. There have been an increase in these encounters and some wonder why. Reports of these aggressive encounters began in May 2020, but they are becoming more and more frequent according to a study published in June 2022 in the journal Marine Mammal Science. Yeah, my God. Dramatic video of an orca slamming into a 66-foot sailboat off of Spain's southern coast. The force of the whale damaged the hull. Crews had to pump water off the boat. The assault seemed to follow a clear pattern, with orcas approaching from the stern to strike the rudder, then losing interest once they have successfully stopped the boat. There is no record of an orca killing a human in the wild, which suggests that these attacks are purely directed at the boats. The spike in aggression towards boats is a recent phenomenon. From the year 2020 to 2023, there have been around 500 interactions with only those three boats sinking this year. Experts suspect that a female orca they call White Gladys suffered a traumatic event like a collision with a boat or entrapment during illegal fishing and that caused a behavioral switch, which she is now teaching other orcas to copy. These recent attacks opened up a whole new topic of conversation relating to the intelligence of orcas. People started to wonder how smart orcas must be to be able to teach, learn and orchestrate these attacks with such precision. Orcas belong to the order of Cetacea. They are the largest member of the Delphinidae family and can measure up to 8 meters and weigh up to 6 tons as adults. Orcas are highly social and most live in groups called pods. A pod is a group of maternally related individuals. They typically consist of 2 to 15 animals, but larger groups sometimes form for temporary social interaction and mating. Pod members communicate with each other through clicks, whistles and post calls. Each pod possesses a unique set of calls that are learned and culturally transmitted among individuals. Scientists have discovered that there are four measures of the brain structure that are correlated with cognition. One is cortical thickness that is a measure of the cerebral cortex. Like I mentioned in my last video, this part of the brain is associated with complex processes like memory, attention, language, thought and consciousness. Cetaceans rank high in cortical thickness, but not as well as humans. A second measure of brain structure is purification, which is the amount of wrinkling and folding in the cortex. That's why species with smoother brains like koalas are said to be less intelligent. Gerification increases the total amount of cortical nerve tissue that processes information, making brains with more wrinkles and folds more skillful of handling more data and processing it faster. Cetaceans have significantly higher gerification compared to land mammals. Neuroscientists are bewildered at how heavily folded the cetacean brains are. The gerencephaly index, also called GI, for humans is 2.2 for bottlenose dolphins is 5.62, and for orcas is 5.7. This makes orcas the most gerified brain in the world. Another characteristic of the brains of orcas is their highly developed amygdala, which is associated with emotional learning and long-term memories. Yet the most fascinating part of orcas brain that amazes scientists is the insular cortex, known as insula which is the most elaborated in the world. The insula is involved in consciousness and playing diverse functions linked to emotions that includes compassion, empathy, perception, motor control, self-awareness and interpersonal experience. As you can tell, orcas and other cetaceans are extremely intelligent. The root of the problem is that we apply an anthropocentric definition of intelligence. Most people believe that humans are at the top. Thomas White has proposed an alternative approach to defining intelligence, one that is species-specific. The challenges that need to be met simply to stay alive are significantly different on the land than in the water. We should think about intelligence simply as the intellectual and emotional abilities that make it possible for a species to survive in their environment 
and to solve the problems and overcome the challenges that life throws at them. In the case of orcas and dolphins, they have evolved a sixth sense called echolocation to best survive in their environment. Orcas and dolphins produce clicks that are transmitted by a fatty tissue called melon. This produces a directional and amplified sound that travels in water up to 800 meters. When finding an object, the sound bounces and returns back to the orca. The lower jaw receives the wave and through the auditory nerve, the information ends up in the brain. Through this sense, orcas not only see the shape of the object, they can also see inside it. Echolocation is used for navigation and for foraging. Furthermore, echolocation can be shared with other members. Like sonar, the echoes from the sounds bounce back and tell the whales what's around. Then they tell their family what they've found. Once a shoal is located, they all head down together. This is the kind of social intelligence of orcas that is beyond our ability to completely comprehend. In fact, scientists who have analyzed the nature of the orca calls said that these are very dense and rich. There are tremendous variations in intensity, volume and tone, as well as emotional content. After half a century studying dolphins and orcas communication, scientists have not been able to understand it. What they are communicating and how remains a mystery. We will need an orca's complex brain to be able to process and translate that information. Although it would be nice to get people to change their anthropocentric worldview on animal intelligence, it's not an easy feat. You won't be able to convince most of humanity from one day to the next. It's a slow process. And sometimes what helps the most to change a person's mind is to play by their rules. You want to compare all animals to humans to gauge if they're somehow worthy? That's a flawed worldview. But okay. I'll go along with it. Which is why in this video I constantly say things like blah 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 like humans or blah 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 even better than humans. I talk like this because it's this way of speaking that makes most people start to be interested in animals and their rights. Speaking of animal rights. A couple of years ago, a group of scientists argued that whales and dolphins should be treated as people through a declaration of the rights of cetaceans in view of their powers of intelligence. Their webpage listing the rights that cetaceans should be granted states that based on the principle of the equal treatment of all persons, recognizing that specific research gives us deeper insights into the complexities of cetacean minds, societies and cultures, we affirm that all cetaceans as persons have the right to life, liberty and well-being. We conclude that every individual cetacean has the right to life. No cetacean should be held in captivity or servitude, be subject to cruel treatment or be removed from their natural environment. All cetaceans have the right to freedom of movement and residence within their natural environment. No cetacean is the property of any state, corporation, human group or individual. Cetaceans have the right to the protection of their natural environment. Cetaceans have the right not to be subjected to the disruption of their cultures. The rights, freedoms and norms set forth in this declaration should be protected under international and domestic law. Cetaceans are entitled to an international order in which these rights, freedoms and norms can be fully realized. No state, corporation, human group or individual should engage in any activity that undermines these rights, freedoms and norms. And nothing in this declaration shall prevent a state from enacting stricter provisions for the protection of cetacean rights. As you can see, this declaration was agreed to in 2010, but sadly not accepted. It is now 2023 and dolphins are still kept in captivity. Not every organization that has dolphins in captivity is bad, since there are a lot of groups that focus on rescue and rehabilitation and sometimes some individuals aren't able to go back into the wild. However, there are still certain zoos and aquariums that keep perfectly normal dolphins for the sole reason of human entertainment and profit. In the wild, they also aren't being left alone. Orcas are considered one of the apex predators in the oceans. One of the biggest threats to their survival are therefore not other sea animals, but rather chemical contaminants, disturbance from vessel traffic and noise, 
entanglement in fishing gear, food limitation, and oil spills caused by humans. It's sad to see that we already knew 13 years ago how intelligent cetaceans are, and still there hasn't been a large improvement in our behavior towards these wonderful animals. If you believe that cetaceans should have similar rights to us after having watched this video, then you can sign the declaration at the bottom of the website and join a global call to have rights formally declared for cetaceans. I obviously have already signed. Before I end this video, I just want to say that there have been many instances in which orcas have helped humans hunt for fish by showing them the best fishing spots and herding the fishes into the nets. After having helped out, they get a part of the catch, which motivates orcas to keep pursuing this symbiotic relationship. I just wanted to mention that so people don't end this video with the conclusion that orcas are only ever mean and remorseful towards humans, although we kind of deserve it. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you've learned something new and meaningful. If you're interested in this type of content, then stick around and I'll see you next time. Bye!